All right, guys, welcome back to Death From Above 40K. It's uh, battle report time again. Got a bit, of, bit uh, more ninth edition action going on here. We got some brother on brother action. We got some iron warriors taking on some blood angels. Um, the blood angels list is a bit of a variation from the last game. So a lot of stuff similar, but then there's a few key changes that have been made in the list. And then for the iron warriors, well, for ninth edition, this is their first uh, turnout. So, I'll be heading up the Blood Angels. So as you know on the channel, no one touches my Blood Angels. It's just the way it bloody is. And uh, I've got Jakey Boy back here with me, and he's chosen to, it was his choice to run these Iron Warriors. He's, you know, he's, he's really loving the Chaos action. He was looking over on the shelf and he's like, mate, these are some cool ass models we need to uh, put them on. And, and he's come up with some different stuff. So let's break these lists down. I'll start by going over the Chaos list. So it's a bit different to what would normally be run on here, but I like what he's done. It's pretty cool. So we'll go through it. We'll go through the HQs first. Got a Lord of Possession in there. Uh, his two powers that he's chosen to have, uh, Infernal Power and Sacrifice on them. So he'd be healing vehicles and also giving the demon keyword models reroll ones to hit and wound while they're within a certain what is it i'm looking at it now <sighs> within six of him there you go so it turns him into like a captain slash sergeant lieutenant all that jazz all right next him demon prince malefic talons um oh he's also got the relic the exoskeleton as well which Gives him a two-up save. This is the Lord Obsession that's got that. And he also heals one wound per turn. So, back to the big guy. Demon Prince, Malefic Talons, Warp Storm, Bolter. Um, he's going to have warp time for his power. And that's about it for him. He's a big boy. He's going to get in there. He's going to fight. He's going to scrap. Then here, we've got the Warlord. Uh, we've got the Lord Discordant on Hellstalker. So, he's going to have the Incendium as a relic. So, he's spent an extra command point to get that. And he's also got Iron Without. So pretty much what that means is plus one strength, toughness, and wounds. And he also has Feel No Pain is pretty much what that relays out to. So they're the three HQ choices. Then for troops, he's got one, two, uh, three Chaos Space Marine units. And they've all got bolters and a LAS cannon in each unit. Then behind that, elites, we've got a Hellbrute, twin las cannon, rockets, we've got a big possessed guy, another big possessed guy, and that's the three um, elites. Then for a little bit of difference, it's got one, two biker units. So they've got their bolters, and then every one of them has a plasma. So the champion has a combi plasma, and then the other two have a plasma gun. So lots of pew, 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 pew coming out of them today. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. He's also paid because he had extra points to put a power fist on each of the champions just to make up his 1500. Then behind them, one, two, three, Venom Crawlers. So that comes to 1500 points of Iron Warriors. He spent, a, he spent one command point to uh, get himself an extra relic. And uh, the list is looking reasonably solid from where I'm standing. New edition, so we don't know. We're about to find out. All right, let's go over the Blood Angels and see what I have done. So, in this list, same thing again. We've reduced the HQ choices down to three. So at the front, we've got Mephiston, because I always take Mephiston. A lot of people are like, oh, he never does anything, blah, 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 blah. Don't care. It's Mephiston. He comes along for the ride. Look at him. Look at him. His powers are the Quickening, Wings of Sanguinius, and Shield of Sanguinius. Next to him, Sangry Guard. He's got a jump pack. He's going to heal people. I keep putting him in the list because he's always bringing things back and giving that extra strength and all that sort of stuff. He, he, he does his thing. It's cool. 70 points. Can't go wrong for a HQ choice. And in the, he, um, when it gets to the Assault phase, he carves it up with his little chainsword. Then here, we've got the Warlord. Um, Librarian Dreadnought. Made him the Warlord today. The Warlord trait I've given him is the Gift of Foresight. So it's a six up feel no pain, but he re-rolls ones for that as well. Just wanted to see how that goes, make him a little bit, you know, more survivable. Whether it's not, just mix it up a little bit. Uh, his psychic powers are the Quickening and Wings of Sanguinius as well. Obviously both of these guys know Smite. Then in troops, we got one, 
two, three five-man intercessor squads with uh, auto bolt rifles and power fists on the sergeant. I still think this is the best troops choice. Um, I am going to be adding in some of the assault guys, but I, I just don't think they're gonna put in the amount of work that these guys do because the amount of shots these fire while moving up the field is just irreplaceable. I know people are saying that the chainsaws and more attacks in close combat and that, but you've got to weigh up what are they doing until they get into close combat. These guys are always participating in the battle. Remember that. All right, moving on to elites. 10-man unit of Death Guard. Death Guard, Death Company. I got pulled up on that in the last video. Death Company, the company of death. Play too much Death Guard on this channel. It's bloody great. So these guys... All got bolt guns, five with chainsaws, five with power axes. That's how I run them. They do okay each battle. They're all right. You, you guys like seeing them, so that's why they're in the list, really. Then we got one, two Furioso Dreadnoughts. I've mixed it up this week. So there was a little bit of a correction last week, which thanks for the people that commented to say that the frag cannon is a blast weapon now. I looked it up. That is correct. It is a blast weapon now. So what I've done is I'm running one with the fist, Flamer and Frag Cannon. And then, this is how I want to try them out this time. So, I'm going to go with the Blender Claws and two Flamers. So, these guys are only AP2 instead of AP3. The Fist is AP3. And uh, the Blood Talons is what they're called. But you get to reroll hits and wounds. And he's also got the Flamers, which do get to shoot in combat. So, I'm hoping he's just harking back to the days of old where just blending through things. Then we got... Sangria Ancient, Banner of Sacrifice, Sword. You do not leave home without him. Up the back here, we got the Redemptor Dreadnought back. This time he's uh, sporting the Assault Cannon as opposed to the Plasma Cannon. Because, uh, same thing again, can't shoot in combat with the Plasma Cannon. And also, not having to take a penalty to his shooting when he moves benefits the amount of shots that come out of this thing. And then another big swap is we got the Bile Predator back. I had a game without it. And uh, just missed it, you know, it was a sad moment, missed it and all that jazz. Um, I wanted to put it in there actually to see how effective it is now that it can zip around the board, laying down a hail of fire while not having a penalty to shoot. And then also even if it gets locked in combat, it can just absolutely unload with the same amount of shots as if it had moved to last edition. So it's going to be interesting, like if you charge one of these and it stays in combat, like... I'd almost just leave it in combat and just unleash just an absolute hail of fire. So hopefully we get to see that today. All right, guys. So there's the two lists. A little bit of change. Brother on brother action. All that sort of jazz. So we'll get to it. And um, once again, learning. This is only our second game of ninth edition. So don't go too hard on me. And I do appreciate all the feedback from the last match. It was all positive stuff and people were, you know, polite. It was uh, productive. That's the word. Productive. Let's keep it that way. All right, guys. We'll uh, roll up a mission and we'll get back to yours. All right, guys. We've uh, set up our armies and we've come up with a custom mission, something we thought would be a little bit of fun, actually, just to, to mix it up. So the mission is called Manufactorum Madness Part 2. So we've had a Manufactor and Madness on the channel before, but this one's a little different. So let's go over what, what's happening here. So first off, we've got the normal deployment, which has put us 24 inches apart. So he's over there. Blood Angels over here, all that jazz. I'll go through the deployment of the armies in a sec. But then we've got one, two, three objectives. Now, in the Manufactorium, the aim of the game is, it's a little bit inspired by Beachhead, as you can see, we've got him on a bit of an angle here. If you're holding the objective in your side, you get one point. The one in the middle is worth two points. And the one in the yeah, opponent's side is worth three points if you hold it. With a little bit of a twist here, what we've done is, if you're holding any of these, you can activate the robot and shoot with all its weapons at its ballistic skill as per the codex. So these guys will be pumping out a heap of DACA. This guy will be, if you can control that sound a bit, slagging tanks and demon engines. And obviously we've got this guy over here. The whole idea of it is, is uh, 
The Chaos have come to steal some of Belisarius Call's vital information from his manufactorium. Stored inside these robots, all the delicate stuff. And as he's uh, away on holidays, or in isolation, who really knows? <laughs> We've uh, The Blood Angels have been called in to, to stop these chaos scum, buddy scummy chaos. Anyway, alright, so that's the mission. Take the robots, use the robots to destroy your enemies, have yourself a good day. Let's go over the, uh, the armies and the deployment. So, he got to pick the deployment. I got set up first, which means I've got first turn. So, what the deployment on the Blood Angel side is, I've put the Bar Predator all the way over here. Now that I don't have a penalty to move in and shooting, I'm not fussed about where I put it because I'll just zip that sucker out and pew pew pew. Coming over here, we've got the Death Company, Death Company in this building. <laughs> Next one, we got five man Primaris unit, Mephiston, Sangri Ancient, Sangri Buddy old Priest, too much Sangri. We got another unit of troops, troops. We got all our dreadnoughts here, big boy up front. So we've got a sort of, we're over towards this guy here and aiming to make a push across this way. Uh, Jake got to, he did like a bit of a, he was watching what I was doing, he was being tricksy. So first off over here, he set up like a, all the big heavy stuff that looks like it's coming down the center here. Um, he's got some troops here, some troops here. So looking, uh, I guess, to hold on to these. Um, then he's got Hellbrute here, hidden behind here, because now they can move and fire without penalty. Um, all these guys in here. So we've got some Venom Crawlers. We've got the Master of Possession. We've got some of these guys over here. And we've got the Stalker Lord there. Then if we come over to the right-hand side, he's done like a bit of a... A swooping action for around the side. So if you look around here, my arm is sort of mainly over there. And over here, he's got one troops unit, obviously, with their last cannon. But then he's got the Demon Prince. And he's also got one, two units of bikes. So it looks like he's going to try and uh, maybe do a bit of flanking action on me. I'm not really sure. Either way, I'm pretty pumped about this. So we'll get to the mission. And uh, we'll see how, how much of a difference it makes when you can also add the firepower of these things shooting chunks out of your enemy. Just so that we're on the same page too, um, troops units need to hold the objectives. So we're keeping to that as the mission as well. So in order to hang on to it and fire it, you need to be troops. All right, all right. We'll get on with the mission, see what happens, starting with the Blood Angels turn one. All right, guys. All right, guys, let's add this up. Blood Angels. Turn one has been had. A lot of movement, a lot of advancing. Let's break it down. We'll start over here with the Bar Predator. It's behind here, it's zipped around to here. It's got a 12 inch movement, so it makes it quite quick. Death Company, <laughs> Death Company jumped from over here to over here, blocking line of sight and hiding behind these crates, getting ready to pounce out and strike. The big Redemptor Dread just moved forward nine inches. The, everything else behind him pretty much ran up. Um, now, once again, this is why I love these these models because you get the plus one to your advance and like having your assault weapons. Obviously, I it wasn't in range, but these both rolled a six, giving them a thirteen inch. Move, uh, sorry, rolled a six. Yeah, giving them thirteen inch. So when you're using these sorts of troops with blood angels, you got a minimum of eight move, maximum of third. It's it's good. Just saying, these guys. Advanced up over to here. All the little characters are sort of within. This guy got a massive run as well. Same thing as the troops. They got an eight, this has got an eight inch move, plus one, and then he rolled rolled a six or something. He got like a 15 inch move. So he's gone from here, bump it a bump it a bump it a bump, all the way up here. His other buddy didn't roll quite as high, but he's just up behind him. And he's sort of hidden from these this firepower over there. Just around the corner, like in a minute now, I'm gonna jump out and what attack your ass. <laughs> all right. Psychic power-wise, uh, Mephiston put shield on this guy, and then he put f the wings on himself, and that's how he's ended up over here. Uh, that was all the psychic power. Shooting-wise, there was only really two lots of shooting, both very effective, though. So over here, this predator shot over here and killed the shit out of that five-man troops unit. And then the big lad at the front done the same thing, shot over here, killed the shit out of that five-man unit. 
rendering him not able to hold this objective, which was my whole plan. Dun dun dun. Thank you, GW, as well, for making vehicles being able to move and fire without penalty. Also, having the heavy doctrine now means that you're. Oh, I want another bail predator. <laughs> All right, guys. So, we're holding this objective here. And obviously, no troops, troops are troops. Troops are close enough to this one. So, we didn't get to fire anything else because there was no range or line of sight. And we're a close combat army. So, we'll let uh, Jake have his first turn. And uh, we'll get back to yours in a minute. All right, guys. <laughs> End of Jake's chaos turn. And he's, uh, he's decided to show me the firepower that this chaos army has. And sometimes I forget. It's quite, it can be quite devastating. It's got a lot of high strength, AP, high damage rounds coming out of this bad boy. So, movement-wise. These guys start running down here. It's down side of the building. Heading towards this objective around here. The bikes moved around. He made him in a weird way. Then the Demon Prince moved around to here. But then in his psychic face, he cast... Oh, warp time. He warp time. Let's do the warp time again. And he jumped around into here. All right. This guy stepped across this way. And then in the center here, there was just a big push forward. All the spiders moved forward. And everything else followed up behind. Psychic phase-wise... Uh, this guy got off his um, ability to give all these guys reroll once to hit and wound. Um, and then over here, obviously, the warp time. If you just rewind a bit, I'll, you can hear me sing the song again. Shooting phase. We'll start here. These guys and the Demon Prince deleted the Furioso Dreadnought that was there. Just bang. Didn't even know it hit him. Heaps of, heaps of overcharged plasma and the warp bolter actually finished him off. Then with all these bolt weapons on him, he split fired and fired over here and he killed one of the Primaris Marines. Um, no AP on these bolt guns, so did, did a fair bit of wounding and all that sort of stuff, but they still had their three up armor and two wounds, so they're, they're all healed up and good to go over there. Then in the center here, um, oh, that was the other psychic power here. He took two mortal wounds off the big Redemptor Dreadnought that was there. Was unable to deny that one. Then... Two of these spiders finished off the Redemptor Dreadnought. Then a combination of this one and this guy here shot this other Furioso Dreadnought, took seven wounds off him, so he's on his last wound. And uh, I did not bring an engineer today, so, so things aren't looking good for that fella. So, shooting-wise, um, he's killed two Dreadnoughts and absolutely smashed the ass end out of another one. So this one's just walking around, oh, I don't know what hit me, man. I'm just bloody got to get back in the fight. So good retaliation by Jake. At the end of the first battle round, the Blood Angels score one point, and both armies score one point for first strike, which we're running in this. So Blood Angels on two points, and Chaos on one point, heading into the uh, battle round two. So we'll see what the old... Blood Angels can do in retaliation. Now they're, they're down a couple of dreads and uh, we'll get back to yours. Alright, end of Blood Angels turn two. It was a reasonably impressive turn. Um, pretty happy with the outcomes. Let's go through it. Movement, oh sorry, command phase. We got a command point. Uh, movement phase, this thing moved back. Now that we can move and shoot without penalty. Uh, all of this stuff in here moved forward as you can see. These guys moved up onto this objective. And these guys sort of strung around here to fire down there. There was a Furioso Dreadnought that ran up there, but we'll get to that in a minute. Alright. So, Psychic uh, Phase. Mephisto on uh, Perils of the Warped. Took two wounds off himself. Then he managed to put the shield on the Dreadnought. And both of the Dreadnought's Psychic Powers failed. So the only one that went off was the Dreadnoughts one. We failed one, and then the Master of Possession shut down one. So it was a terrible psychic phase. Uh, shooting. Bile Predator. Uh, Mephiston. Furioso. All of these guys here, and also utilizing this, killed one of the Venom Crawlers. The Death Company shot all their rounds into one of the Greater Possessed and wounded him a couple of times. These guys over here shot down here and did nothing. The Furioso Dread that was here 
with his frag cannon, which was an assault weapon, so it went to AP2 this round. Um, and his heavy flamer blew away two bikes and wounded this one. That was the shooting phase. Um, assault phase. The Death Company, they uh, multi-charged the Greater Possess and the Venom Crawler. Um, they lost the guy on the way in, by the way. The four with the chainsaws attacked the uh, Greater Possess, killed him. The guys with the power, power axes took about five wounds off the Venom Crawler, and then old Mephi Fiston finished it off. So the Librarian Dreadnought just stood there all like, what are you, you, are you blokes gonna let me in on this, or uh, is there anything left here? No, no, all right, I'll stand here. Doesn't matter though, he's still alive, he's the Warlord. Um, obviously there was no hit back either, because as you can see, they're, they've just consolidated in front of the characters, but the way that I positioned it was that we didn't consolidate into these guys. Um, they stayed there. The Dreadnought ran in, he got the charge off on the Demon Prince and he took six wounds off the Demon Prince, but then the Demon Prince smacked him down, sent him, just smacked him into the dirt. Take that, you're out. Mind you, it only had one wound left on it, so it wasn't, it wasn't like a super heroic thing to do, but anyway, that was the end of Blood Angel's turn too, so it was a pretty good one. We will get back to you with the next Chaos turn and we'll see what they can do. Alright guys, end of Jake's Chaos turn two, <laughs> and he's, he's done some pretty, pretty cool stuff. Alright, we'll start with, he obviously gained a command point um, for his command phase. Then, movement wise, the most, the biggest part happened over here. So, he ran with these guys and he rolled a six and was able to run all the way to the objective. Then these guys moved around. And then with warp time, this guy ended up here. He's also over there, but we'll come back to that in the combat phase. Um, so, then over in the center here, things pretty much just charged. The hell brute moved slightly this way and fired across over to here. Psychic phase, um, he healed up this guy, uh, pretty much back to full health, and then cast the power that gave reroll hits and wounds of one. I was unable to deny each of them, so all his psychic powers were successful. The warp is strong with these chaos uh, guys today. Shooting wise, this guy and this guy shot into this tank and only managed to take two wounds off it. Barb predators are invincible, write that down. Um, Bale Flamer shot over into here and killed one of these Primaris Marines. That was about the extent of the shooting really, everything else here is sort of psychic or, or choppy. Over here is where all the shooting and carnage happened in terms of that, so I'll summarise this side of the board quickly. So, bikes moved forward. These guys didn't shoot because they ran. These guys all overcharged their plasma because they had the demon prince nearby and blew away the intercessor squad with ease. Then this guy shot into the priest, took two wounds off him, and then managed to get off a charge and ran in and stomped him. So they've, they've got pretty much full control of this side of the board now, so that's a bit, a bit hairy. <laughs> then over in here, the Lord uh, Discordant took um, seven wounds off this guy. Him having the Shield of Sanguinius and the Feel No Pain kept him alive with one wound and then he managed to hit back and take three off the Lord Discordant. Um, these, the combination of this Grade Possessed and this guy ran in and killed a heap of the Death Company. There's only four of them left there. But then they retaliated and took four wounds. No, oh, sorry, five wounds off the big boy here. So it was a bit of a scrap in there, but the key element to this round was, because it's the end of the battle round, we're scoring the points. Jake stealing this off me jumped him up three points and knocked me down one. So at the end of battle round two, we're both on four points. So he's turned that round pretty quickly. Pretty impressive, really. There's a good, good little maneuver he's done there. So going into Blood Angels turn three, uh, both armies are on four points. So that's, that's good. That's swung it back around, made it more interesting. All right, we'll have Blood Angels turn three. And uh, that means it's assault phase time, baby. Let's turn those power swords on. All right, guys, and a Blood Angel turn three. It was uh, semi-successful. It was all right, it was all right. 
All right, what's up with the movement phase? Or the command phase, command point. Got a command point. This thing moved from over there, 12 coming this way. Uh, these guys moved sort of facing back this way a bit. And everything else in here is all stuck in in combat. Uh, shooting phase. We started off, so all the bolt guns and all the bolt guns from here shot over into the troops unit of Chaos Marines. Killed four of them. Um, and he passed his leadership, rolling us three, so it was seven, so, you know, four plus three, seven. That's the leadership of a Marine. So, they're still there. But then after shooting in there, because of the new rules, there wasn't enough models close enough to him for him not to be targeted. So I was able to shoot him with the heavy boulders, because they're range 76, and we took one wound off this guy. I wanted to try and kill him. The rest of the small arms fire here shot over into this greater possessed as per the same rule for characters. There's not enough models to protect him. And we took four wounds off him. Um, shooting wise, that was about it. Combat, these guys stayed in here with this guy and took another couple of wounds off him and lost no one in return. Then over here, um, Mephi charged in. Once again, psychic powers were either shut down or failed, but he got the shield off on that guy. That was about it. Not going so well psychically this uh, this game. But then they both cut into this guy and took took him down. Then he retaliated and killed the librarian dreadnought. Then I paid three command points for Mephiston to go again, and he's taken him down. So he's lost 11 wounds total in the combat, but in saying that... Um, he's not dead, and he's he's probably going to regenerate. It's, gonna, it's probably going to be pretty brutal. Um, I was hoping to pay that three command points to fight again. I also paid command point for Wisdom of the Ancients, so they had to re-roll ones in that bubble as well, so they were hitting more accurately. Helped a little bit. But these Lord Discordants, they're just tough as nails. So, we'll get on with the Chaos Turn 3. And uh, see what happens, because I was, I was hoping to remove this guy off here. Did not work. And this guy's still here. So this, this could actually be big trouble. We'll see what happens. All right, these Blood Angels are in here. We still got the Banner of Sacrifice, mate. We'll be right. All right, we'll get on with Chaos. Turn three. All right, guys. End of Jake's turn three and Chaos has turned it up to 11. Let's just say shit got seriously re real that round and a lot of my blood angels died. So what happened? Movement wise, all this stuff sort of stayed here as you know, in combat or moving around within this zone. Didn't go too far. Over here, the bikes come zipping back around this way and the demon prince come over this way. Um, the bikes, the demon prince, this guy with his las cannon also operating that robot blew away one of the um, intercessor units that were here. Um, well, psychic power wise too, this guy got healed this guy up. He's only, on, he's only lost five wounds now because he used the stratagem. Plus he used the psychic power. Plus this guy automatically heals one wound. So he went from 13 wounds. Sorry, he had 11 wounds and he healed six yeah so it was one from himself two from this guy and then three from the stratagem so he's, he's now on five so he's a healthy boy again um now <laughs> i was talking about this before and it happened i wanted to see units shooting in combat and killing things so in the shooting phase this guy cooked mephiston's face off he rolled a six and did like uh, 10 wounds or something on him. It was ridiculous and just cooked Mephiston out there. Then because he killed him in the shooting phase, he consolidated into the death company that we're in with all these guys and finished off the rest of them. So that was pretty brutal. This thing shot over into here and took four more wounds off my bar predator. So he's, he's hurting a bit, but he's still on the battlefield. Uh, this other stuff didn't get attacked due to the Lord Discord just going off and killing everything. And then the only moral victory I got this round was the Demon Prince went to charge in. He was on one wound, so I paid the command point for Overwatch. Um, failed the Overwatch. He ran in, and I he didn't kill a single guy. So he got five wounds on me. I managed to save, I think, four of them, then got off two feel no pains. And believe it or not, then it was the Sergeant with his power fist hit him five times. So 
Must have been something to do with the banner. They just were like, not today, mate, and just slapped the shit out of that demon print. So I'm glad that happened. But going into, or sorry, at the end of uh, this round, because he's, this guy's still here. Couldn't, couldn't get rid of him. He's, he's there. Anyway, um, at the end of this battle round, the Blood Angels are on six points because they still hold this centerpiece, which is worth two points. But then these guys have got another three. So they're on, on eight points. They're now two points ahead of the Blood Angels. So not only am I getting my head stomped in battlefield-wise, um, they're ahead on points. But I've already done the maths. We can win this. It has to be very specific and everything has to go exactly as it needs to. So we'll get back to you in Blood Angels turn four and see if we can't turn this around. All right, guys. All right, guys. End of Blood Angels turn four. And we've managed to do something that could keep us in the game or we could just get completely get pummeled. I don't know which way it's gonna go, so we're gonna to have to wait and see. But what did I do this turn? So these guys, with their auto bolt rifles, this is why I love them, 15 rounds. Smash this guy off the objective. Absolutely pumbleized him. Then they also use this cannon. Oh, that went a bit blurry, didn't it? To fire into this guy. We got maximum shots and everything. We only took one wound off the Lord Discord. It was, it was very underwhelming. This guy shot into the bike, split fired. So with his heavy boulders, he fired at the single guy. And the rest of it fired at the other guys. He killed the single guy with his heavy boulders and then only wounded the other guys. Then I managed to charge in with all these guys, smash that unit, and then consolidate back this way. So they've sort of moved, but then come back to where they were due to consolidation. So how it pretty much works out now is, this is my plan. I'm on six points, he's on eight points. Because I killed this here and he's already got Warlord, he can't score no more points. So my plan is, if I can hold out to the end of his next turn and still have a troop's choice on this, I'll score two points, at least getting possibly a draw. That's, that's about as good as I'm, I'm looking at at the moment. Now he's got one thing in my advantage. We measured here, and we measured here. Now these demon engines can't fit through. They can shoot though, and he's got other things that can run through like this possessed. And he's got a lot of firepower. So we're gonna let him have his turn while I cower behind this thing and uh, see if I can withstand the uh, shooting. If, if not, this is bad times. But anyway, feeling confident. We got the banner of sacrifice, feel no pain. Two wound models, come at me bruh. Okay guys, end of uh, Jake's turn four and I have had my head kicked in. So, let's let's go through what happened here. So first things first, he used the stratagem and he also used this guy's power, plus he healed one wound, healed this guy back up to full strength. Now from where he was here, when he's at full strength, he had a 12 inch movement. So he simply moved to here, then he flamed it into my intercessors, killed four of them. Even with feel no pain, he rolled a five for his auto hits, and I did not. I failed four saves, and then got no feel no pains. Like he just cleaned them out. Uh, <laughs> then these other guys shot in. They didn't really do anything. Oh, sorry. Yes, they did. This guy here shot in with his las cannons, finished off the um, intercessor unit. Then the Lord Discordant from here rolled a nine for his charge ran in and just absolutely pummeled the Sanguinary Ancient. So, all that's left on the battlefield is a broken Baal Predator, which, let's face it, it's not taken down any of this stuff. And now that that's happened, I can't score any more points anyway. The only point I would possibly be able to get is if I took 13 wounds off this thing with that Baal Predator in one round of shooting, and that would put me on seven points to Jake's eight victory points. So that's a solid ass whooping on Jake's behalf. Um, I don't think we need to even discuss the who's been picked for man of the match because it's damn straight this Lord Discordant on Jake's behalf. He said, um, 
In ninth edition, the way it plays, like, it was already an absolute weapon in combat and really survivable. But now with the auto-hitting Bale Flamer, like, it just cooks you. Yeah. Like, you, you know, if you're stuck in combat with it and then it flicks over to their turn, like, he's pummeling you with that Flamer. Like, in combat, he killed buddy uh, Mephiston in, in the shooting phase, then was consolidating into other things, just chopping things up. So, Lord Discordant, just all the way. Um... I'm going to pick this Bale Predator. I think it done brilliantly. Throughout the battle, it consistently gunned things down. And now with the new rule, being able to move and fire with heavy weapons, it feels like how it should feel. Like, that's what a Bale Predator is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be able to zip around the battlefield at high speeds, you know, utilizing its massive movement and gunning things down. Like, that's the whole purpose of a Bale Predator. So, really happy with, with how that thing performed. Um, the mission worked out well, <laughs> having these extra shooting things was cool, um, and, and I'm liking ninth edition so far, we need a bit more practice and stuff, as I said, positive feedback's always a thing, make it productive, and um, we'll get back to putting some more lists together and get back to you, so uh, watch out for this Lord Discordant on things to come. Alright guys, hope you like this, and we will see you in the next one.